Welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here with a green tea to explore. Uh, unique, uh, not a usual uh, origin for this tea. Talk about that in just a moment, but I'm going to scoop out enough here. For the bottom inch, inch and a half diameter of my Gaiwan. Just a, little, yeah, a couple more flakes of leaf there, leaves there. Pour my water, but I brought to an early boil. Not a full rolling boil. And with this nice goose neck kettle, easy to get a nice smooth pour. Cover those leaves so that a little bit of so the water flushes them underneath the surface of the water there. And a little bit of water above the rim of my lid kind of creates an airtight seal. So that's that steep without the air getting in, changing the, the color of the liquor. Talk, and that gives us time to talk about this tea. This is from Tea Mania. This is an organic green ramen. Uh, this is, uh, you can get 100 grams uh, for $10.35 US dollar. Uh, that's a, a recent tra uh, conversion, I should say. Uh, it is USDA organic. There's also a Canada organic standard that it meets. Uh, and there are others. I believe there's a Thai organic standard. This is from Changdao in Chiang Mai province of Thailand. Uh, this is a 2012 harvest. So this has been, uh, it's not, the, there's lots, there's developments happening within those, those regions of, 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 of Thailand. Uh, some of those farms, some of those, uh, areas are, and you can read more about these in particular products there on Team Mania. Some of these are part of the Royal Thai project where they, where farmers are developing different uh, crops. They're learning different skills. They're getting away from uh, some of the crops that are less successful, some crops that, uh, because they're less successful, entice people towards producing uh, illegal crops, uh, crops that are used for illegal drugs, and this is a way to prevent, provide an alternative to those, to those people in those areas. I'm going to talk about this tea, the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor. Starting off here with the, uh, the dry, I'm going to give this a smell. Blow on a little bit, breathe some warm, moist air, kind of wakens up the First off, there's a there's a sweetness here, and it is it's a light it's a green green sweetness there, um, green vegetable. S I got hint, uh, light hints of kind of a buttery sautéed type of spinach smell. Got some pungent smells, strong pungent smells in there as well. Uh, I'm going to scoop out a few of these leaves. Kind of look at them for a moment. You have uh, a kind of a darker green, green gray type colors that is, was dominant here. Uh, you've got p looks like portions of leaves. I mean, both ends of this particular leaf here are flat, straight, uh, indicating that it's not that suggesting that part of the leaf is not fully intact from stem to tip. Uh, you've got piece parts here. You've got some that are kind of wiry or wrapped along the, the the length and or width of the twisted and wrapped kind of along the length or width of the leaf. You've got others that are kind of more crumpled, crinkled, uh, almost semi-bald. Uh, what else? You've got some smaller pieces here. So you have pieces, pieces that were an inch or more in length, crumpled, semi-bald that are shorter than that. Smaller than that. Uh, what else? Here looks like a, um, a stem piece there. The portion of a leaf, kind of lighter and paler color there. Green, yellow type color almost. So a little bit of variation in color. Uh, some variation it looks like in the shaping and rolling of these of these leaves as well. So I'm going to move now and get to the pour. I'm going to angle my lid. I should have put this over here actually, over to the side a bit. I get my pitcher ready and middle finger and thumb to hold the bowl. My ring finger helps to support. 
Nice, smooth, even pour. Shake out the last few drops. Set that to the side and talk a little bit about this wet leaf. I'm going to give it a shake here. And then smell. Interesting that uh, coming in before I took a smell, I thought, okay, this is... I've come across teas kind of like this before, and I thought, oh, this is going to have a, a lima bean, uh, overcooked lima bean kind of smell, but it doesn't. It's lighter. It's light. It's almost woody. There's almost kind of a sandalwood hint of that in here. A Maybe a, a roasted uh, asparagus type of smell. Something kind of a, there's a toasty green vegetable. More less beany, more toasty green. Maybe grilled zucchini. That that area of if I, if I combine those three, the sandalwood, the asparagus, and the zucchini, the uh, some, it's it's in that range of, of those three. I'm going to take out a few of these leaves now. This leaf is going to unfurl very easily. Uh, it's not a full it's not a fully intact leaf. There's a section missing. Um, looking at this leaf, don't see a lot of oxidation, which is uh, consistent. I mean. Green teas should be green. I discover here a little speck here and there of oxidational blotches there, looks like. Uh, let me take out another leaf or two, see what happens with those. This leaf I can tease apart gently. This is probably, this was more than, looks like, yeah, this is more than one leaf rolled together. Uh, and this one has a bit more bit more blotchy rust type element, a little bit more oxidation took place there. Uh, an example of a leaf that did get a bit more oxidation, actually it was two leaves folded together again, and so this one is a bit of a darker brown, and even in that color, that color goes all the way through. These leaves are large, uh, fairly tender, they, they, would, they tear, They've got some elasticity, but they're going to tear fairly easily. Okay, setting that back to the side now and getting to the liquor. Give us a swirl. And you notice that this is uh, less uh, on the green, green-yellow spectrum. It's more towards the uh, kind of a honeyed yellow type of color beer type golden brown yellow color light um, light green vegetable aromas this one is a little bit more of a of a green bean type of smell a little bit of corn in there as well give it a taste here Positives. I notice there's not an intent, a high level of astringency. This one is quite low in astringency. Very mild and gentle as far as bitterness goes. So those are there's a third. Uh, I should also say there is there's a smoothness. There's a, a thickness about this texture. So the fact that it isn't very it's, not, it's quite low in astringency. It gives it a richer, thicker, brothier feel. Aromas are a little bit more, and flavors are a bit more subdued. You have uh, a light kind of toasty element here, um, and think lightly toast, like a lightly baked uh, cracker type of saltine, U.S. saltine cracker, for my British viewers who may be confused.
there's that, uh, again, light, very light kind of cracker, toasty, baked kind of element. A bit of a vegetable, and again, it's 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 very gentle. It's um, it's almost um, where would I put this? Baked, roasted bok choy, maybe. If you put a, it took a bulb of bok choy, uh, cut it in half, put it on the grill for a minute, uh, put it in a uh, cast iron skillet for a minute, and just let it kind of lightly brown some of that element there. Aftertastes kind of builds on that. Uh, you could call it a, a, a baked, baked, roasty sweetness. Veg, roast vegetables, if they're roasted and browned well, not excessively, they will often pick up this kind of caramelized uh, sweetness element, and that's what's coming out here. There's a, almost a, that caramelized, uh, roasty vegetable sweetness coming out. I have to admit, I was surprised by this tea. I would not have predicted these components to express themselves, uh, especially in this way. Yeah. A little bit of astringency kind of picks up as this tea cools, uh, and as the cool tea, the aftertaste of the cool tea. But still, it's again a, a nice kind of roasty sweetness. Fairly extended, it's still going on, as I can still taste that. And there's a weight, a thickness, a, a brothiness that, that sets, gives a kind of heft or a weight onto my tongue and, and mouth, which gives a, a, a fulfilling, satisfied kind of sensation there. So those are positive. Um, I would give the, it's hard to, you can't, it wouldn't be fair to compare this necessarily to a Chinese or a uh, Taiwanese type tea, so it's kind of standing on its own, giving the positive components, the qualities that it has. Uh, I would probably give this one an 89. Uh, I would want, I would be interested in ways and the and skills of the farmers who may be able to coax more of the flavor aroma out. Not too much, but just a bit more of uh, complexity there. So come back to Walker Tea Review. Learn about teas from Taiwan or other places, I'm sorry, of Thailand or other places that you may not have experienced teas. Find those ones that can surprise you. Subscribe to the newsletter and get this kind of information sent directly into your inbox. And uh, subscribe to as a, as a member to Walker Tea Review to get those in-depth stories you don't find anywhere else.